Hello everybody, ready for a little bit more Asian Cup? Let's go. I'm wearing the Lusk jersey that I last reviewed a few days ago in a video. We'll see why in just a bit. Um, and it's two groups again, uh, Group E and Group F. And f initially, funnily enough, Group F uh, first got to determine who goes on and who doesn't. Um, which, in a way, is also not the uh, made sense when I think uh, how everything's set up and uh, also the big game between uh, Saudi Arabia and Qatar is for sure uh, attracting more attention in the Arabian world. Good to have this uh, in prime time than it would be uh, Japan against uh, Uzbekistan. And we'll start with Japan against Uzbekistan, which was a game for first spot. And yeah, can I avoid Australia and probably get a better draw? And Japan took it seriously. I absolutely seriously was dominating from the beginning, uh, but they ran into a counter attack. Um, unfortunately, uh, late in the first half, where Uzbekistan to uh, Shomurodov in the 40th um, got the 1 0 lead uh, was actually well taken, but you know, uh, poor defending. I mean, he never should have gotten that free through. Uh, Japan almost immediately, e e immediately equalized uh, through Muto. A uh, nice cross in, and he just had it to head in. It was very uh, well done, and then a beautiful uh, shot. We'll talk about free kicks and wide range shots in a, a little a little bit more. This was definitely one of the best ones. Uh, he just stops it with his chest, uh, controls it, and then uh, really good technique to low shot right up, uh, raising absolute beauty. Uh, so Shiatani makes it 2-1, and from then on, only Japan was the winner. Uh, and they secure top spot in Group A, and Uzbekistan, as we will see, will play now against Australia. Uh, so, yes, I maybe underestimated or overestimated Uzbekistan uh, versus Japan. <sighs> yeah, what Japan was showing so far uh, made me wonder now. Japan uh, showed that, yeah, we're a side to be reckoned with and uh, don't discount us point well taken. Uh, then uh, the other game was between Oman and uh, Turkmenistan, where Oman took the lead through a free kick goal. Uh, commentator said it's a beauty. When I look at it, uh, there was it went almost through the wall. And uh, it's one thing I, I keep continuing. Um, lately, I'm, I, every time I say I, I'm in the Asian, Asian Cup, there are many, many free kick goals. And yes, some of them are great, but uh, some of them are also, I think, down to poor defending. Either the wall is very leaky or the goalkeeper is uh, not very well positioned. I think we had it uh, yesterday, something happening like that. So um, it's a little bit a tell. I'm not sure if it's a tell, but it's, it's a feature of this Asian Cup. There's a lot of uh, long range shots and a lot of goals are scored from uh, free kicks. Um, which I don't know what what this should signify, but it's it is uh, remarkable. Let's say the positive. I like both types of goals a lot, and yeah, so therefore it's good. But I wonder uh, if this has anything to do with uh, poor defending, poor positioning, or whatever, or just uh, that the quality is good. Let's go with the quality. Again, so it was uh, one nil uh, for Oman through a freaky goal, and as, as I said by Kano, I honestly don't think this was uh, very well defended. Um, but Anna Durdiev uh, for Turkmenistan hit back in the forty-first uh, to make it one-one, and that actually raised the stakes for Oman quite a bit uh, because they now needed, and Oman was the favorite goal going in. So if Oman was to do anything. They needed to win by two goals uh, because they went into this game with, I think, um, only one goal scored and three goals conceded. This was minus two and the two uh, teams um, that were already three points in the uh, best uh, third place ranking was Vietnam at minus one and Kyrgyzstan at zero. And even if Oman would be now on, so they were at that point. Uh, 
let's do it, they were at uh, 2-4 goal differential. Turkmenistan really need me to have a big win to secure. Now, if Oman would score two more, they would go through because this would give them a goal differential of 4-4, which put them ahead of Vietnam. It, they achieved it, but it was hard, hard, hard work. Um, Al Ghassani uh, broke through the Turkmeni defense, who were, I think, Turkmenistan was only defending, 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 uh, and holding on, um, which, to their credit, uh, is something. Uh, you know, you didn't mail it, mail it in, you had a chance, and maybe another point will give you a good result. Uh, that you can be proud of would be your first point at the Asian Cup. So, you know, there was pride at stake, and that usually makes for better games. But Al Ghazani finally broke through um, uh, the Oman defense, and then in the 93rd minute, Al Musalami scores the all important goal for Oman that sees Oman through. And if they wouldn't have scored that goal, Oman would not have been through. Uh, that, that much we know now. So it is 4 4. Uh, Oman is level on points and goals with um, Kyrgyzstan, but I have the slightly worse um, yellow card score. I think uh, we have Kyrgyzstan at minus five and Oman at minus six. So that leaves then Group E. Um, and let's go right into the place, uh, a race for third place before we talk about the last game, uh, where it was between Lebanon and North Korea. And both had a long shot to go in now. Um, North Korea, having a very bad goal differential, would have no chance whatsoever until, until unless they've beaten uh, Lebanon by a really high scoreline. And Lebanon also needed to win with um, at least four goals difference to have any chance. Uh, and then it, it's, it was down to a uh, yellow cards. So it, was, it definitely was not easy, but uh, with a uh, four goal difference, you, uh, they would have been gone through. Unfortunately, this relieved or uh, this received already a very early um, Depper on those hopes because Pak Kyan Yurong uh, scored a really messy free kick goal. This was absolutely horribly defended uh, to give North Korea the first goal of the tournament and actually the lead. However, it was Lebanon who really um, took the game then to North Korea and uh, Michel in the 27th made the equalizer. It's 1 1 at the break and then Lebanon really desperately trying to. Uh, win it uh, and running up the score uh, El Helve uh, scored two goals in the 65th and then in the 98th minute so they have a long uh, stoppage time and also Mas took, Matuk a final penalty made it 3-1 it just was one goal too little too late uh, Lebanon finished also with three points uh, level on points and goals with Vietnam but Vietnam has only five yellow cards Lebanon has seven and that basically meant that Lebanon goes out, as I somehow predicted, Lebanon and um, North Korea will not uh, go through to the next round. I was actually surprised that uh, Lebanon is better than North Korea, but they have been they have been had spirited showing. So um, ahead of the tournament, I would not have thought that. Uh, now having seen them, they were better than North Korea. North Korea absolutely miserable, an absolutely miserable sight to watch. Uh, they were the one team that really fell off, or dropped off from the rest. I think uh, even Turkmenistan, although they uh, lost big against um, Uzbekistan, had a good showing, and other teams also. I mean, um, North Korea really got smashed all the way around. Uh, I think they had a, what's the goal differential? 114. Uh, that's more or less unheard of. So yeah, so we know the third place teams were knew that Saudi Arabia and Qatar are going through, but what was the um, order? And I said ahead that I still believe, I, I don't know what to think about Qatar. Um, well, I should have better believed in them. This game was all Qatar. The, I think so, so, so Saudi Arabia had, when it was 0 0, one chance, but uh, to be honest, what I saw was all. Uh, 
Qatar going ahead. There was um, Ali Amoes was fouled, fouled in a box penalty that was actually saved by the Saudi Arabian goalkeeper, but uh, Ali Amoes um, scored the breakthrough goal just um, ahead of the halftime uh, in stoppage time of the first half. Um, make it 1-0 for Qatar, very well deserved and um, he is why I'm wearing the last shirt because he played in 15-16, he played I think five or uh, six games for LASK um, on the we had back then a contract with some Qatari uh, federation and yeah he played for the team and he scored a few goals. Little did we know that um, I think there was never a chance that uh, he uh, would, would, would have stayed with us. But yeah, a former LASK player is now the leading goal scorer at the Asian Cup. So that's why I'm wearing my LASK shirt for Ali Amoes. And yeah, uh, it continued in the uh, second half. He scored another goal that was taken away for absolutely no reason except that the referee seemingly needs some uh, visual aid. And then he got his uh, second goal in the 79th and secured Qatar uh, first place spot. As I can say, it was uh, quite impressive. Uh, I think now we know that Qatar having a rocky start against Lebanon maybe, but even there they got the winner. Uh, now we know for sure that Qatar is uh, the real deal. And I'm, I don't want to put them into the... Um, level of being absolute favorites but they look strong and Saudi Arabia yes the World Cup they had a so-and-so showing more negative but I think they are a really good side uh, they are they're, they're decent Asian side so yeah Qatar beating them uh, handily uh, convinces me quite some so let's look at how it pans out for the round of 16 which starts on Saturday First game is Thailand against China. Uh, I think China will go through. Then Iran against Oman should be all Iran. And if we think Iran against China, that should be uh, Iran. So Iran in the semifinals. I don't see anything else. I think that Thailand could pull something against China, but I think China is the favorites there. Uh, so with Iran, first semifinalists. Then uh, the next one, uh, Jordan against Vietnam. I think Jordan will do that uh, quite comfortably. And then we have a very interesting matchup in Japan, Saudi Arabia. I mean, this is uh, Asian Cup royalty uh, facing off, and I think that's basically the marquee matchup in the round of 16. Um, from what I've seen, I just said that Saudi Arabia is uh, royalty. I still think what Japan showed me and what Saudi Arabia did not show me against Qatar, that um, it will be Japan going through. And then Japan-Jordan should be Japan, so we have Iran against Japan in the semis. That's how I, how I at least uh, see it. South Korea, Bahrain, anything else but South Korea comfortably going through would surprise me. And then Qatar against Iraq, that's an interesting matchup. Uh, that's a really, really uh, intriguing and interesting matchup. Um, from what I've seen, Iraq, I don't think is a weak side. I think Qatar is probably just an edge better. Just an edge better. So I would say Qatar going through. Then we have South Korea against Qatar. And I wouldn't be surprised if Iraq makes it through, to be honest. Uh, Iraq um, played well so far. I mean, yes, didn't have the greatest opponents, but uh, they held Iran to a 0-0. So that shows me there's some quality there. Um, so we have South Korea against Qatar in the quarterfinals. That's going to be interesting. Um, I would say South Korea still, um, now that that human song is playing, um, he came, he immediately transformed the side. So I would say South Korea in, this, uh, in the semis. And then the last for uh, the United Arab Emirates against Kyrgyzstan. They have yet to show me that they're a good, a really good side. Um, but I still think against Kyrgyzstan, they will go through. Uh, so the UAE will go in the quarterfinal. Then it's Australia against Uzbekistan. <sighs> Timidly, I'm saying Australia. And then UAE against Australia. Um, I think the hosts will get that one. Um, Although I think that Australia would be the better side. Even Uzbekistan would be the better side. 
um, I just have this gut feeling that there is something that the UAE are riding some luck as well. So I actually think that the UAE out of those four will make it to the semifinals, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's Australia or Uzbekistan. And I think for both of these teams, this would be a little bit even overreaching their potential, and especially given that Australia lost the, uh, early to Jordan. And then we have the semifinals. I said Iran against Japan. <laughs> that, will, that would be a great match. I would see Iran going through in South Korea against either uh, the Emirates Australia or Uzbekistan. I on the sea South Korea. So I think South Korea to me is in the final. I mean, there is Qatar, there is Iraq. It's not that straightforward uh, in their path. Um, but I think once they make, if they make it to the semis, um, that would mean to me that uh, they will go on to the final if they make it to the semis. And then, yeah, I'm still thinking Iran against South Korea in the final. So yeah, that was it. Let me know what you thought about the games yesterday and all the drama, especially for third place. There was more drama around third place than um, for the top spots, to be honest. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.